Yo, what's poppin' people with Cobra Star Green? Back with you guys in another video that y'all first time finding my channel or anything like that, you guys definitely hit the subscribe button. Also, the video. Yes, today we're we'll doing my review for the new Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Yes, I will be doing my review. And uh, with saying that, man, I need you guys to really like this video. It really does help if you guys like the video. Uh, but uh, this movie review will be full of, and it's what people wanted, full of spoilers, man. Spoilers, see how you see up there? Spoiler warning, man. You guys have been alerted. So if you guys don't want to be spoiled, just come back. You know what I'm saying? This video will always be here. So you can come back when you see the movie, then come back and watch this video. I promise you, this video ain't going nowhere. YouTube ain't going to delete this one. You know what I'm saying? So, just come back whenever. But this is going to be full of spoilers to you guys. Like I said, you guys have been warned with that one. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start talking about this one. So, this one, this movie, you remember why there's such an emotional weight onto this film. And you remember why you were like, Marvel, you better get this one right. Because this one follows the passing of our beloved, beloved Chadwick Boseman. You know, this one, it starts out talking about, hey, Shuri's trying to save her brother, but we know ultimately she will not be able to. And she's going through her grief and she's like, wow, we have all this technology, but we can't save our, our my brother, a.k.a. Chadwick Boseman, a.k.a. T'Challa. You know, so that's how the movie pretty much starts. So the first 10 minutes of the movie is going through T'Challa and him passing away. And the funeral that takes place for him. And you remember, and me was like, yeah, this is why this movie's gonna be very emotional right here. And I think they handled it very well because there were certain moments for me where I was actually tearing up. I mean, I kind of knew about the funeral, knew it was coming because I'd seen the trailers and, and things in that nature. But whenever they started showing the title card and it was silent, and all you see is just, you see just what all Chadwick Boseman had done for the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe, you remember, oh, shoot, yeah, this dude was special, man. You remember that, you know, and, and they showcase, and they give an amazing tribute to Chadwick in that in that moment. And I was like, God, damn. I, I started to really tear up. I was like, yeah, I knew this was coming, you know. But yeah, that first 15 minutes is pretty much just, them just going through it's the funeral and then the, the the tribute to Chadwick pretty much and yeah that that really got me but you're like Cobra so what was the movie about you know past that because the movie, whole movie can't be about him which it's not um pretty much it's what the other movies were about vibranium everybody wants a piece of this goddamn vibranium and it's to the point where it's like well not only do humans want vibranium but uh also another dude wants this vibranium and his name is Namor. And Namor pretty much is like, well, there's a machine that can detect vibranium that this scientist built. And I'll talk about her in just a little bit. But he's like, yo, there's a machine that this chick, that this scientist built. He doesn't know who the scientist is, but he's just like, there's a machine there's a machine that 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 somebody built. And he's telling the Wakandans, well, if you go and just give this chick to me, we ain't got no beef, no problems, you know? But, uh, and he's doing it because of the fact, like, hey, we want to keep this out of the, you know, the human's, you know, possession. Because who knows what the hell they're going to do with it, you know? So he's like, if you just bring her to me and I just kill her, get rid of her, you know, we ain't got no problems. But the Wakandans are like, mm, we, we good on that. We, we're not going to let you just kill her and get, and get rid of her. So, hence the big war. And that's it, pretty much this movie is a big ass battle. You know, two cities going at it one one at one another. So that's pretty much what this is. And I think they do an amazing job of showcasing that. I think this is a very I think this is one of the best directed Marvel projects in a while. And I knew I'll probably be saying something like that because it does have my favorite director attached to this movie, um, aka um, Ryan Coogler, he's my, one of my favorite directors. He directed it, did the screen, uh, screenplay, uh, and co-wrote it, you know? 
he he was everywhere. His footprint is everywhere on this film. And I think he did such an amazing job. I have to give big kudos to Ryan Coogler in this one, man. Amazing, amazing job, man. I, I definitely one of the best well shot uh, MCU films by far. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what it is, man. That, that it's two people going, two worlds going at it. Now I do want to talk about some characters. Now I do have a lot of notes here, so we're gonna be going quickly through this. So you guys gonna have to keep up. So first character I want to talk about is the main character of the film, Shuri. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Shuri going through the passing of her brother, and not only the passing of her brother, but the passing of another character. And we'll talk about her in just a little bit because I do kind of want to talk about this particular character. So I won't reveal her now. But uh, she loses a lot in this film, you know. And I think her emotions... I've never seen uh, Nat uh, Latina Wright have so much amount of emotion within a character. And she did a phenomenal job. She did a great job. Now, one thing I have to get a, of a nitpick for... This is a little bit of a... This is a stupid nitpick. Some of you guys might, might say, but uh, how many times her hairstyle changed in this film was fucking ridiculous. She goes from like letting her hair go to like braids to letting it go braids. I'm like in in different braids. I'm like, yo, who's braiding her hair this fast? You know what I'm saying? Now unless they got some type of machine that can do it. I, I was like, god damn, her hair is definitely changing a lot through this film. But I, I, that's a little nitpick for me. I was kind of like, it's a little too much. But that's just, that's just personally me. But, uh, yeah, I thought she did such a great job in this film. And I know people are like, well, we want to know about her. But there's somebody. Oh, shoot, not him. But there's somebody else you want to know about, Cobra. And I have to say this per particular person delivered. And... Namor, man. Namor did such an amazing job. I, I'm not even going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and act like I know how to say this man's name. I do not. But I'm just saying I'm looking forward to seeing him in other things coming up. Uh, Namor, man, he's like, he's the first mutant we've got to see in the MCU so far. And man, did I feel like he brought it, man. There, There's certain moments where I'm like, how are they going to be able to stop this man? You know, I'm like, there's no way. Like, he's so overpowered to the point that the big, strong, you guys have seen him right there, the big, strong M'Baku. Like, M'Baku was funny because of the fact that M'Baku, in the beginning of the film, he's like, all right, bring this fish man to Wakanda and we're going to beat him up. You know what I'm saying? Easy peasy. And then M'Baku gets hit one time by Namor, and he's singing a whole nother tune. And Baku pretty much like, maybe we should hear Namor out. You know what I'm saying? He's singing, he's singing different tunes. That just shows you how strong and how OP Namor actually is. And one thing I will say, while I'm already on this, is that, you know, pretty much the first movie kind of just shows Wakanda, and they, and they explore Wakanda. Well, this one, you get to... Explore. I think it's Takon, Takon. I think that's how you say it. And you get to explore that world. And I think Ryan Kluger did such an amazing job being being able to show us the world that he was from. You know where he was raised, where he's at. You know. So like I said, first movie is so Wakanda, and then like, well, you're we already know Wakanda. So let's go ahead and show his world. I can, I know some people gonna call it Atlanta, so whatever. But I think that did a really great job at showcasing it in this one, man. Now, I already talked about uh, uh, M'Baku for a little bit. M'Baku is my favorite character. Like I say, he's the funniest. But he, he, his story was also funny in this one. But there's a certain character in here. Oh, my gosh. She did amazing. She stepped up to the you know, plate. And I'm talking about now, uh, 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 Agina uh, Bassett. I think I said the saying. She plays Ramonda in this film. And, oh, my God. Man. You see how everything was taken away from her in this film. She, and I knew she was a great actor, but when you see her in this one, you 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 start to realize, like, oh yeah, when she needs to to when her screen presence needs to be felt and she needs to put her screen presence out there, she does it, and she did a phenomenal job here, phenomenal. Now, yeah, this is the character I was talking about that when I said Shuri had lost everything. She ended up losing her mom in this one, too. You know? 
And I was sad to see her pass. You know, she ends up making a, a, a sacrifice, saving another character. And I was like, damn. I was like, I was really liking her. I liked her way more in this one than I did in the first. Probably because she's in this one way more than she is in, in the first one. But she did such, oh my God, such an amazing job in this one, man. Now, there is another character I want to talk about and give me one second to find out. It's not Namor, but it's a surprising character for me. Now, some of you guys might know who I'm talking about. Some of you guys might not. I'm talking about the scientist that everybody wants to kill. Yes, Ironheart, man. Played by Dominique Thrawn. I think I said his name. Maybe correct me on that. But she, this is her, this is the first time I've ever seen her in a movie. This is the first time I've ever seen her. And I really felt like when there was a character that I'm saying, yeah, this person's having fun playing this character. It is her. You can tell she, she's pretty much like a young Tony Stark and she's super smart, you know, got an MIT and, and things in that nature. And you can just tell how much amount of fun she is having playing this character, Ironheart, you know. And I'm like, I'm excited to see what they do with her in the future. You know, now I know at the end of the movie, they, they gave this chick this ridiculous ass. Uh, I mean, I know they give her this goddamn pow Power Rangers suit, you know, which I thought was kind of cool. But I'm like, yeah, the costume designing kind of went too far. It was like, I'll talk about the costumes, the costume in, in, in a little bit. But I just kind of felt like in some instances, they were like kind of trying to do too much. But I'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, yeah, I thought she did an amazing, amazing job in this one, man. I think people will really start to be like, okay, when you see this movie, you'll be like, okay, I can't wait for the Ironheart TV show to come out. Be just just because of her. And like I said, I know she I know she loves playing this character. So she did an amazing job. There's more characters I could talk about. I'm not going to because I'm already 11 minutes into this. And I've just been talking about characters. I do want to talk about some other things, though, man. Um... <laughs> I was going to talk about this, but I thought it was stupid. Uh, I'll just bring this up really quickly. So if y'all guys didn't know, this movie changes a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit of a joke, y'all. Hey, don't take this part too goddamn serious, y'all. Because I know some of y'all want to take it serious. But uh, if y'all didn't know, you know what I'm saying? Namor freed the slaves. <laughs> kind of. Uh, and then he killed them. So I, I just want to throw that in there. There's a part where like Namor is like, he's kind of trying to free some slaves. And then slaves are like... You devil! And then he kills them. So, But pretty much, yeah, if you guys don't know who Namor is, he's an anti-villain. He's not always a villain, but uh, he's, he, he is and then he isn't. There's some times where he's actually an Avenger, you know? So I'm kind of excited to see what they do with Namor in the future, I would say. Now, another thing I want to talk about really quickly. Uh, oh, they didn't make... Oh, another thing. They didn't make his goddamn shoes goofy. I, that's one thing I've always thought about Namor in the comics. I was like, man, those shoes look so stupid. And in this one, with the little flapping wings, they didn't make them stupid in this one. So I really did appreciate that, man. Um, yeah, so I thought they did a phenomenal job. Like I said, with Namor, I know I was talking on that too much. But one thing I do want to talk about, man, uh, there's some drawbacks I get this movie, man. So this movie, when it came to, like, the editing... And there's some things where I'll say that they did a really good job with the editing. Because I feel like the transition between scenes... I thought, and it's really noticeable. You'll really see it. I thought that was really done really well because it really went well with the story. But then there was some editing parts where I was like, what the heck is this? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this this don't work at all. And I don't have specific examples, but if you guys see the movie, you guys will be like, oh, yeah, there's some editing mistakes here. There's some editing parts that they were just, they, they weren't, I don't know if they were mistakes here, just kind of weird, you know? And that was kind of one of my drawbacks. Another drawback of mine was some of the costumes. Um, like I said, I already talked about Ironheart's costume a little bit and how she looked the like goddamn Power Rangers. But it wasn't even just her. There's another costume they show. They don't show it in a trailer, so I can't really show it to you guys. But uh, uh, what's her name ends up getting a costume? Um, because Shuri ends up building her a costume. I forgot her name, honestly. Uh, but she's the, 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 what was her name? She was bald. They, and I'm the reason why I'm saying bald because of the fact that they threw hella bald jokes at her in the movie. So I guess it's all cool now. But, uh, oh man, what was her name? I can't, I forget her name in the film. I honestly forget her name. But they give her a costume. And uh, they even give her this chick. They give two chicks a costume. They even give her a costume in the film. Later on in the film. And I, I thought it looked terrible. I mean, it was straight CGI, but I just like, ugh, this just don't look good at all. So I think the costume department 
went a little crazy with this one. I'm not going to lie. They, 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 they went a little... I was like, y'all need to slow down, okay? I know Marvel got the budget, but y'all stop, okay? Let's keep it grounded a little bit with these costumes. But I thought the costumes were ridiculous. Now, I want to talk about this before I forget it. I didn't write this down in my notes. There's a single character that shows up, and I knew he was going to show up in this movie. I had a feeling he would show up. I was just wondering how they would bring him into the film. And that is my favorite actor of all time, big dog, Michael B. Jordan. Yes, he does end up coming back in this film. And he comes back uh, through Shuri because Shuri becomes the, the new Black Panther. So she has to go through that stage where she runs into somebody in the, uh, 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 in the plane. And she ends up, because she was, she's full of rage, uh, you know, losing her brother, losing her mom. So she ends up running into Chad. I mean, not Chadwick. God damn it. She runs into Killmonger, a.k.a. Michael B. Jordan. And pretty much he's like, hey, pretty much pretty much he's like, you going to be a pussy or you going to stand up and fight? And that's where, yeah, that, that's pretty much his role in the film is to encourage her to be stronger, you know, and be violent pretty much. But, yeah, I did like the cameo that they gave Chadwick in this movie. I was like, man, I, I really, I, I'm not, well, I say Chadwick, I keep saying Chadwick, but uh, my, uh, Killmonger in this one. I thought they did a really great job with Killmonger. Because I knew they were going to bring him back some way, but I just didn't know exactly how they would do it. I, didn't think, I thought they were going to bring him back to life. But, no, they just, they have, whenever she goes to the plane, that's when she visits him. And he has this cool new hairstyle. I was like, what, they got barbers in, 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 in the afterlife? <laughs> like, this dude, it's not this hairstyle anymore. It's a different hairstyle that looks even cooler. I'm like, what the hell? Like, what, what's going on? But, yeah, uh, one thing I will say. Is uh this movie, if you guys are worried about, you know, how you've seen different Marvel projects, especially of lately, there have been a lot of uh, one too many jokes in, in, in the property or in the in the movie or in the TV show you're watching. This one, I will say, this movie does have its jokes, but it knows how to balance the jokes. It's not just, oh, uh, we're throwing jokes, 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 jokes. It's like, no, there's moments where it's, it's serious and the movie's taking itself seriously. You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate that. Because I'm like, wow, for a while, you know, if you've seen Thor, man, that movie don't take itself seriously at all. But it's like this one, yes, they do. They do take it seriously. And like I said, they got you got your jokes in there. Because it's Marvel. You're going to have to have your jokes. But at the same time, it's like, nah, nah. We we know why we're here. We we got to be serious with this one. So and they did, I think they did a phenomenal job. with. I think they did a great job at... at Putting a, a, a consistent and established tone in the film, man. Um, one thing I do want to talk about, the ending. I think Marvel, I think Marvel, I think they uh, they learn from their villainous mistakes. I've, I've been a big person with saying, yo, y'all got to stop killing off y'all villains, especially y'all good ones. And I think they they finally listened and they was like, no, nah, we got, we you're right. We got to do more of these characters. So, yeah, Namor ends up surviving. Now, if y'all are like, wow, how the hell did Shuri be able to defeat Namor? It was kind of ridiculous. It kind of makes sense because she's one of the smartest people in the world. So, she's going to learn how to outsmart somebody. So, Namor can't do very well on land too goddamn much. Or he needs to be by water a lot. So, she ends up defeating him that way. And uh, she's like, yield to me. And Namor is like, yeah, all right, bet, I'll yield. And pretty much they go their separate ways, pretty much. So I'm excited to see what they do with Namor in the future. Because you could definitely, definitely do a lot with his character. You can, you can, you know what I'm saying? You can make him an Avenger if you really wanted to. He goes both sides. You know, he's an anti-hero. But, uh, yeah, I had a lot more written down in my notes. But uh, I think I'm just going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to save him for another review. Um, I will say, man... This one, this movie right here, I do feel like... I'll talk about the post-credits scene right after. But uh, I don't think this movie is as good as the first one. But it, that doesn't mean that this one is a bad film. This one still has a lot of compelling moments that do a great job at drawing you into the film that you're watching. Or into the property. Uh, you have a lot of characters bringing their A-game. Because you know there's some Marvel projects where I'm like... Damn, these characters suck. You know, they don't, they're not bringing their A game. They're not, they're not, they don't really care. But it was like everybody here was like, yeah, we're doing this for, we're doing this for Chadwick, you know. And I thought Arrow did such a great job from the directors, 
from the actors, you know, from whoever established like how the scenes are gonna be placed. I think everybody did such an amazing job on this one. Um, I'm going to give this movie. I'm still thinking about it, but I think I'm going to head go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give this movie. Hmm, I'll go ahead and give it an 8.8 .8 out of 10, man. I really thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this one. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8.8 .8 out of 10, man. Uh, definitely, like I said, not as good as the first one. But it still ain't no bad film either. I think everybody will walk out enjoying this one just as much as I did, pretty much. So, hey, man, if it's your first time finding my channel, hit the subscribe button. Also, that video. Let's go ahead and talk about the uh, post credit scene really quickly. So, post credit scene is really cool, but I just don't know what they're going to do with it. Um, so, the post credit scene pretty much is Shuri just defeated Namor. And she's like, she's sitting down, and uh, another character gets introduced to us. Now, it's not Dr. Doom. No, Dr. Doom is nowhere near in the film. He has no type of presence in this film. But it's, uh, it's Chadwick Boseman, a.k.a. T'Challa's son. And pretty much, he kept him hidden from the world. He didn't want nobody to... Chadwick or T'Challa didn't want nobody to know that he had a son. You know, so... I wonder what they're going to do with that. I wonder if they're going to like probably like age gap and, and make him the new Black Panther maybe later on down the line. Maybe. Who knows? Um, but yeah, they introduced T'Challa's son. So like I said, I don't know what they're going to end up doing. It was a cool moment, you know. But I just don't know what they're going to do with it. Uh, but hey, man, y'all first time finding my channel, subscribe button, also like video. Tell me you got thoughts, complaints, criticisms, all that down below. And hey, man, we'll see you guys in the next one, man. Peace.